What's going on everybody? I hope everyone's doing well today. Welcome back to another video. And if you're new to this channel, welcome. I'm Reggie Bryant and I help people achieve their financial goals in today's economy. And as the title suggests, we are gonna to talk today about how to invest in the S&P 500, especially if you're a beginner. When I first started getting into investing, all I heard was S&P 500, S&P 500. I didn't even know what the heck that was what it means, what it stands for. I didn't know any of that stuff and I definitely didn't know how to invest in it. So the title of this video addresses a very important question. And by the end of this video, you'll have all the knowledge you need so you can start taking action and investing in a very highly reputable investment. And by the way, I do have links in the description so you can learn more about the S&P 500. So I have articles from Investopedia about the S&P 500 and I also have a personal link that I made myself and it's all about different types of S&P 500 funds, so you don't have to look it up yourself. You can, but I already have something laid out for you, and it's 100% free. You can click the link down in the description. So first of all, if you're wanting to invest in the S&P 500, I want to completely explain it to you very briefly, just so you can know exactly what you're getting yourself into. And today I'm gonna to do something a little different than usual, so make sure you stick around for that. It's gonna be pretty fun, or at least I think it'll be fun. It's, this is a pretty dull topic to talk about, just like as a floating head. So I'm gonna show you some pictures today that I drew out for you to make this make the most amount of sense. And then as soon as I explain this to you and you've seen the drawings and all that, then we'll get into exactly how to invest in the S&P 500. If you're already familiar with the S&P 500, you know exactly what it is. Feel free to skip past this part of the video and go straight into the part where I jump into how to invest in it. So first of all, I'm gonna explain what the S&P 500 is in plain English, and then we'll jump straight over to my notebook where I drew a nice picture for you. So what is the S&P 500? The S&P 500 is an index which consists of the top 500 publicly traded large cap companies in the US. And this is cap weighted, also known as capitalization weighted, which we'll discuss that here in a second. It'll make a lot more sense in the picture that I show you. And then you're probably wondering what is an index? An index is something that measures the price performance of a variety of securities, such as stocks in this case. So now that you're familiar with those concepts, we're gonna jump straight over to my notebook and you're gonna see exactly what I'm talking about. So if you're just getting started with investing, you probably already heard the phrase a billion times to diversify your investments. That is what the S&P 500 is. It is an extremely diversified investment. And as you can see right here, I have the 11 sectors of the stock market. And this is how they are calculated and allocated into the S&P 500. And I'm about to explain exactly why. So in this beautiful drawing right here that looks like a Tyler drew it, Make no mistake, a grown man drew this, and that was me, so you gotta show some respect. But anyway, think of the S&P 500 as a pie. I even drew crust around there for you. Now this right here, this is you. This is you not knowing yet what the S&P 500 is, and this right here is you once you understand exactly what the S&P 500 is, you will be good to go. So first of all, this pie is the S&P 500. I wasn't about to make 500 slices to show every single company, but what I have done is, I went and looked up exactly how each pie slice was split between each sector. So as you can see here, 29.5% of it is technology companies. So think of companies like Apple and Google. And then financials is 13.1%. Think of stuff like Visa, MasterCard. Healthcare is 12.8%. That's CVS, Johnson & Johnson, things like that. Consumer discretionary, think of luxury brands like Amazon, Marriott. Communication services, 8.9%. Think of companies like Verizon and AT&T. There's industrials, which is 8.6%, and that's companies like John Deere. Then there's consumer staples, which is 6.1%, which is companies like Walmart. There's energy companies, which is 3.8%. Think of companies like Chevron. If you've ever been to the gas station, you've probably seen a ton of Chevrons everywhere. Exxon Mobil is another example. And then we have real estate, which is 2.4%. So think of companies like public storage. I know this is a poorly drawn label, but bear with me, that's public storage. If you've seen those orange garages everywhere that helps people put things away, that's exactly the company I'm talking about. Another example would be O Realty. And then the last couple we have materials and that's companies like Sherwin Williams. I'm sure you've seen their paint like everywhere. That's a good example of materials. And last we have utilities, which makes up 2.2%. When it comes to utilities, I want you to think about 
your utility bill. So think about electricity. So stuff like Duke Energy, and there's several other examples, but this is probably the most well-known one. But yes, this is the S&P 500. So companies within these sectors are split up just like this. Now for every sector, there's a ton of companies that represent every sector, but these right here around, these are just examples so you know how to put a face to a name with each sector. Now, how do these get weighted? Like I said before, these are cap weighted. And again, the SP 500 only deals with large cap companies. So the biggest companies in the US. And all that means is their total market cap. So in here, the market cap is trillions and trillions of dollars. And then as we get lower, it gets into the billions and so on and so forth. But the way the SP 500 works is the components or slices, for example, with higher market caps carry more weight. That's why technology is the biggest slice of the pie. It carries more weight because it has a higher market cap. And then it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Technology is making waves and I think it's gonna be the biggest piece of the S&P 500 into the foreseeable future. Anyway, I forgot to mention this earlier, but SP 500 stands for Standard & Poor's 500 Index. In a nutshell, that is what the S&P 500 is and that is exactly why buying this gives you a piece of all of this. And I'll also mention that this is a self-correcting thing. So this index, once you buy an index fund, which we'll talk about here in a second, or an ETF even, what happens is, let's say Apple and Google are within this slice of technology. Let's say Apple is above Google in terms of how much money goes into Apple. Well, if Apple stops performing and Google's like constantly improving, they might say, you know what, Apple, you're gonna get knocked down a few notches, we're gonna bring Google up. And that's gonna improve the whole fund, which is why this is one of the more secure investments that you can buy. Anyway, that is the S&P 500. So now that you've seen my lovely drawings, we're going to jump straight into how to invest in the S&P 500. Here's a fun fact for you. The S&P 500 is an index, which means you cannot invest in it. It is purely a benchmark. It's something you can look up on Google. How much is the S&P 500? And it will straight up show you the chart. In fact, I'll show you right now. So I just took a screenshot of it. I'm going to put it right up here. At this time, the S&P 500 is $5,125.09. But again, this is just a measurement. You cannot directly invest into the S&P 500. But what you can do is you can invest in something that tracks the performance of the S&P 500. And this video is recorded about a week in advance before I put it out. So this has been recorded on March 6, 2024. So by the time this video comes out, you might see that the S&P 500 is at a completely different price. That's okay. Anyway, the two ways that I'm going to show you how to invest in the S&P 500 is either through an ETF, which is an exchange traded fund, or an index fund. Both have funds that track the S&P 500. So we're going to jump into my phone real quick and I'm going to show you exactly how to invest in it. <clears throat> Three, two, one. We're about to record. Boom, boom, boom. All right. So I just know S&P 500 funds off the top of my head for ETFs, but we are in this app called Weeble, which I love, and I do have a link in the description. If you click it and you don't have Weeble yet and you start a new account, you can get some free stocks just by signing up through my link. And at a later time, I'll show you guys how to find different funds and things like that. But VOO is a perfect example. This is Vanguard's S&P 500 ETF. It even says it right here if you're looking at my screen. It's the one at the top. So you click on it. This is what it looks like. You can 100% invest in it. So if you, if I wanted to buy this right now, I would hit trade. And then I would just buy however many I want. So one, two, or however many, right? And then down here, it shows you how much the estimated total cost would be. And then you hit buy, and then that's game over after that. That's how you would buy an ETF that represents the S&P 500. But there's more. So there's SPY, that's Spider's S&P 500 ETF Trust, and it moves similarly to how the other one is. It is more expensive, but this is just an example. And again, you would hit trade, and then you would select the quantity you want, and then you hit buy, and then that would pretty much be it. 
index funds are a little different than ETFs, but they have very big similarities and it just depends on your personal preference, which one you'd rather do. And I'll have to make a totally different video on that topic, just so you know the pros and cons of each. But anyway, we're gonna go to Vanguard again. So we're, we're right in my phone right now. So VFIAX, this is Vanguard's index fund that tracks the S&P 500. So here we go right here. And the, the difference is you need to have a minimum investment of $3,000 in order to own an index fund in Vanguard for BFIAX. But that's one of the differences. Another difference is you can automatically invest in index funds, meaning you can have it basically on auto where your bank account sends $500 to the index fund to automatically invest it, and then you're done. With ETFs, a little different. You kind of have to manually invest. And if you guys were wondering, this is exactly where I got the breakdown of the composition when it comes to the 11 sectors. This is where I got it from. And just so you know, Vanguard invented index funds. So this is a highly, highly reputable source. And that's how they split theirs up for BFIAX in particular. And this right here is showing their top 10 holdings right now. So Microsoft, Apple, Nvidia, Amazon, Meta, Google, both Google has two things, class A and class C. Berkshire Hathaway, Tesla, and Broadcom, which is AVGO. But if you want to see everything, there's 504 total companies. So it doesn't necessarily have to be exactly 500. It's 504 in this case. But this shows you how their holdings are in the exact order their holdings are. It has Pepsi, Bank of America. So if you really want to see what you're getting yourself into, you can check it out on the Vanguard website. There's other ways to see what's inside of ETFs as well. I'll talk about that another time. As a matter of fact, in another video, I'll show you exactly how to do that. It's, it's my video I made on how to invest your first $1,000. I highly recommend you check that out. Anyway, if you want to buy it, you click buy. And then if you want to buy it from there, you go to the actual Vanguard website like I just did. You click buy, and then you have to answer a few questions. You set up an account with them, and you follow the instructions from there. And then make sure you have at least $3,000 so you can have your minimum investment started. And then you'll be good to go. And on some platforms, VFIAX is available as an ETF, but it just depends on what uh, investing platform you use. Like on Webull, it doesn't have that. So I just stick with VOO. But there you have it. That is exactly how you invest in the S&P 500. Either choose through an index fund or through an ETF. But there's other brokerages. It's not just Vanguard. You could also use Fidelity or Charles Schwab. There's some, there's some index funds that don't require a minimum investment of $3,000 like Fidelity has some that doesn't really have a minimum. You can just put whatever you have in there and it'll still grow for you. But you just have to look at what the fees look like when you're making your decision on what to invest in. And again, I can talk about that some other time. But I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed the drawing. And I hope you click the links down below so you can have a better understanding of investing, a better understanding of the S&P 500 itself, as well as just highly reputable stocks that are out there. These are tools I wish I would have had when I first started investing because I was just kind of blindly investing in things just because people on the internet were telling me to do so. But now I have a lot more confidence because I've spent years studying and understanding what my money should be invested into, how to understand what's inside of investments, the difference between index funds and ETFs and things like that. So you're going to see a lot more investing videos from me. But anyway, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.